People with ADHD have trouble holding their attention. And first, let's just define what we mean by attention. Well, attention is perception. It's how we are perceiving the sensory world. So just a little bit of Neurobiology 101, we are sensing things all the time. There's information coming into our nervous system all the time. For instance, right now, you're hearing sound waves. You are seeing things. You are sensing things against your skin, but you are only paying attention to some of those. And the ones that you're paying attention to are your perceptions. So if you hear my voice, you are perceiving my voice. You are not paying attention to your other senses at the moment, okay? You might even be outside in a breeze, and until I said that, you might not be perceiving that breeze, but your body was sensing it all along. There's also a range of abilities to focus. Some people focus very well on any task. You give them a task, they can just laser in on that task. Other people, they have to fight an internal battle. They have to convince themselves that it's important or interesting. They have to kind of incentivize themselves internally. And I'm going to share with you a tool for which there are terrific research data that will allow you in a single session to enhance your ability to focus in theory forever. What we are specifically going to talk about are what are called attentional blinks. Attentional blinks are really easy to understand if you think about a Where's Waldo task. You know this task, Where's Waldo, where you know, there are a bunch of people and objects and things in a, in a picture, and somewhere in there is Waldo with the striped hat and the glasses and kind of a skinny dude, and you have to find Waldo. And so it's a visual search, and it's visual search for an object that has distinct features but is embedded in this ocean of other things that could easily be confused as Waldo. And then you find Waldo. Your nervous system celebrates a little bit. And it celebrates through the release of neurochemicals that make you feel good. You found it and you pause. Now, the pause is interesting. In that moment of pause and mild celebration, you are not able to see another Waldo sitting right next to it. So what this means is in attending to something, in searching and in identifying a visual target, your attention blinked. It shut off for a second. Give someone a string of letters or a string of numbers. And beforehand, you tell them, be on the lookout for the letters R and Z. You're just going to watch this string of numbers go by and there will be a letter R in there and there will be a letter Z in there and try and spot them both. And what you find is when you present that string of numbers and then they see the R, they register it consciously and they tend to miss the Z, just like in the Waldo type example. Now, of course, the numbers are going by pretty quickly, but they can spot the R. They could also spot the Z if you told them beforehand, just spot the Z. It's when you try and see both that seeing the first one prevents you from seeing the second one. It's what we call an attentional blink. We do this all the time, and people with ADHD tend to have many more attentional blinks, and this is true for children and for adults. This is an important point, so important that I want to emphasize it twice in case you intentionally blinked. If you see something that you're looking for or you're very interested in something, you are definitely missing other information. What this is saying is that these circuits that underlie focus in our ability to attend and our ability to eliminate distraction, they aren't just failing to focus. That's just a semantic way of describing the outcome. They are over-focusing on certain things and thereby missing other things. And so our distractibility or the distractibility of somebody with ADHD could exist because they are over-focusing on certain elements and they are therefore missing other elements that they should be attending to. So what they really need is this property that we call open monitoring. Panoramic vision is something you can do right now, no matter where you are. And I can do it right now. You won't know that I'm doing it, but even though I'm still looking directly at you, I'm consciously dilating my gaze so that I can see the ceiling, the floor, and the walls all around me. That panoramic vision is actually mediated by a separate stream or set of neural circuits going from the eye into the brain. And it's a stream or set of circuits that isn't just wide angle view. It also is better at processing things in time. Its frame rate is higher. So you've seen slow motion video and you've seen standard video. Slow motion video gives you that slow motion look because it's a higher frame rate. You're thin slicing time. You can use panoramic vision to access the state that we call open monitoring. When people do that, they are able to attend to and recognize multiple targets within this string of numbers. They can see the R and they can see the Z and they can see additional things. 
So this is something that can be trained up and people can practice whether or not they have ADHD or not. What it involves is learning how to dilate your gaze consciously. That's actually quite easy for most people. Whether or not you wear corrective lenses or contacts or not, you can consciously go into open gaze and then you can contract your field of view as well. There have also been studies done. People were taught to think in a particular way for a very short period of time and that forever changed their ability to limit or reduce the number of these attentional blinks. There are now published accounts in the literature of a simple practice done for about 15 minutes where subjects were asked to just sit quietly, eyes closed, and do what is sort of akin to meditation, but to not direct their mind into any particular state or place, but simply to think about their breathing and to focus on their so-called interoception, focus on how their body feels, if their mind drifted to bring it back. Okay, so it's basically meditation for about 15 minutes. That might not seem like a significant or unusual practice or that it would have any impact at all. But remarkably, just doing that once significantly reduced the number of attentional blinks that people would carry out. In other words, their focus got better in a near permanent way without any additional training. There's something about that practice of reducing the amount of visual information coming in and learning to pay attention to one's internal state, what we call interoception, that allowed them an awareness such that when they needed to look for visual targets, when they need to focus on multiple things in sequence, they didn't experience the same number of attentional blinks. And I should mention, not incidentally, as people age and their working memory gets worse and their ability to focus gets worse, the number of attentional blinks that they carry out goes up. And there are now studies exploring whether or not meditation-like practice of 15 to 20 minutes or so of sitting and just quietly resting and paying attention to one's breathing and internal state can also offset some of that age-related, what is called cognitive decline. Regardless of whether or not you're a child or you're an adult, whether or not you have ADHD or not, a simple practice of taking 17 minutes sitting and paying attention to your internal state, registering your breathing, registering the contact of your skin with whatever surface you're on, can forever rewire your brain to be able to attend better and possibly even offset some of that age-related attentional drift. <laughs> 